Antiplatelets and anticoagulation are similar in that they kind of prevent and treat clots, but they work on different pathologies and it's important to know that. Clots are a very physiological part of our body. They occur whenever we have some bleeding, but they become pathologic and a serious problem if we have underlying conditions that predispose us to worsening outcomes. Clots differ in their composition based on where they are. In our arteries, which is a high flow system, they are actually mostly made up of platelets, which is a type of blood cell. Whereas in veins, which is a low flow system, they're made up of fibrin, which is the end product of the coagulation cascade. In terms of our artery, if we have comorbid conditions like hyperlipidemia, diabetes, hypertension, we actually have buildup of fatty deposits in our arteries, which are prone to rupture because it's in a high flow state. If it does rupture, platelets come to the rescue and try to tie it all up. Unfortunately, if downstream to that artery is the brain or a heart and the blood flow is blocked, you're gonna get a stroke or a heart attack. To prevent these things, we need to prevent platelets from connecting and aggregating to each other. The first antiplatelet is aspirin. It inhibits an enzyme called COX-1 and 2, which therefore inhibits prostaglandin production, which therefore inhibits thromboxane A2, which eventually decreases platelet aggregation. Other antiplatelets include Plavix and Relinta. They work by inhibiting a particular receptor on the platelet called P2Y12, and this downregulates another receptor called G2B3A. And this receptor is actually important in linking the chains of platelets together. So without this, you're not going to have platelet aggregation. For anticoagulation, we need to understand the coagulation cascade. Whenever we have some sort of bleed in our veins, to clot it, our body activates a bunch of clotting factors, which in turn activate each other. And the end monomer product, which actually forms the clot, is called fibrin, and it forms this mesh-like structure. So we need to inhibit any part of this coagulation cascade to actually inhibit this fibrin clot. One way we can do that is with heparin. Heparin potentiates antithrombin 3. This thereby decreases a bunch of factors 9, 10, 11, 12, and decreases fibrin formation. Unfortunately, with heparin, you can get a paradoxical reaction called HIT. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. You can form antibodies that link the platelets together, forming clumps and clots and actually causing bleeding. As an antidote, you want to give them protamine sulfate, which causes an acid-base-like reaction with heparin, nullifying it. Lovenox works similarly to heparin as it is a low molecular weight heparin and it inactivates factor 10A in the coagulation cascade. Warfarin is a vitamin K reductase inhibitor. And so it decreases vitamin K, which is important in the production of factors 7, 9, 10, and prothrombin. However, it's not used too much anymore because of its narrow therapeutic index. You can actually have overshooting of it and a lot of bleeding. If you do have this, you want to give them platelets in the form of fresh frozen plasma, as well as vitamin K to replenish their stores. Luckily, we have these new anticoagulants called DOAC, direct oral anticoagulants, which directly inhibit factor 10A, and they don't need any sort of monitoring, and they're oral, which is great. So to recap, antiplatelets. Aspirin, Relinta, Plavix. These prevent platelet-rich clots in the arterial high flow systems to prevent strokes, myocardial infarctions, or to treat them. Anticoagulants are heparin, DOAX, warfarin, or lovenox. These prevent or treat fibrin-rich clots in the low flow system in veins, and these are used for deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolisms, or atrial fibrillation.